Hi, my name is Victor Shoup, and I'm a principal researcher here at Definity. And I work on chain key cryptography. And I'm going to be talking to you today about chain key cryptography. I'll give you uh, an overview of, of, of what it is and what it's good for. And then I'll talk about some exciting new things that we're working on. Specifically, I'll be talking about um, decentralized ECDSA signing and how that's going to be used by the internet computer uh, to allow uh, canisters on the internet computer to basically hold Bitcoin as well as Ethereum and, and other cryptocurrency and to interact uh, with those blockchains without the need for a bridge. So I'll get into those details as we go along. Uh, but right now, why don't I uh, beam up my slides here on the screen? We can go through this in more detail. So like I said, I'm going to be talking about chain creep cryptography and i'll be giving an overview of of what it is and, and and what it's good for so that's the something old new something old bit here and then i'll be talking about the new applications the new developments and the new applications to uh integrating the the internet computer and bit and the bitcoin network as well as ethereum and so on um so that'll be the new part so let me talk a little bit about what chain key cryptography is at a super high level. So chain key cryptography is really one of the um, technical innovations that really differentiate the internet computer from other blockchains. And it does this by, chain key cryptography does this by allowing uh, blockchain results on the internet computer to be securely validated um, by simply validating a small compact digital signature. Now this is a big difference to how things traditionally work in the blockchain world. In a traditional blockchain, if you wanna validate a result, an individual result, you're actually gonna to have to like compute the entire chain um, from the Genesis block to get to the block containing the transaction to validate this transaction. In contrast, on the internet computer, you can validate the result of a transaction simply by taking that result and the corresponding digital signature and validating that. And you don't need to look at all this other, all these other blocks on the blockchain. So that's a, makes a huge difference and, and makes the internet computer a much more scalable uh, and, um, and, and practical um, web three solution. So how does this work? Well, it works by using um, a critical component, which is decentralized signatures. So before I talk about, decentralized signatures. I'll talk uh, just very briefly about um, what I guess we might call a centralized signature, right? So, um, and, and and here, so this is just a plain old digital signature. It's a classic cryptographic concept. And the way digital signatures work is that um, you have, uh, a user has a, a public verification key, which um, that user generates and gives to the rest of the world and advertises to the rest of the world. And then there's a corresponding secret signing key that that user is supposed to hold and hold very tightly in the sense that he shouldn't allow that key to leak to anybody else. Because the way the user uses this key is that he's going to, to sign a transaction to, a, to, 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 yeah, to attach a digital, digital signature to a message um, in an unforgeable way, he'll use the secret signing key to generate a signature. And then that signature can be validated by anybody who holds the public verification key. But if you hold the public verification key, you can't generate signatures on your own. You can only validate signatures. So this is the tradition, the way in traditional cryptography, um, one uses digital signatures to authenticate messages, to uh, authenticate transactions and so on. Um, and that's also the way that uh, blockchains such as, as Bitcoin as well use, um, use digital signatures to authenticate transactions. The problem, of course, is that in this um, centralized setting, there's this secret signing key which has to be held um, securely. And this does not work well in a, in a, in a Web3 environment where we really want to have decentralized security we don't want we don't want to have any single points of failure or single points of vulnerability in the system so this is where 
decentralized signatures come in or what are sometimes called distributed signatures or threshold signatures. And the way it works is that, again, we have a public verification key just as before that's advertised to the rest of the world. But our secret signing key is actually split up into individual shares uh, that are distributed among the different nodes in the network so that each node in the network will hold just one individual share of the original signing key. And in fact, the original signing key is never stored anywhere uh, altogether, right? The, on, on any given machine, there'll only be one share of, of the signing key. These, these shares are never brought together because again, that would create a single point of failure, a single point of vulnerability. Of course, this creates a, a technical challenge in the sense that now we have the shares distributed uh, among all the nodes in the network and then a request to sign a message comes to the network and these uh, nodes have to cooperate and run a, a um, an interactive protocol that allows them to generate a signature on a, on a message or on a transaction using these shares but again they can't combine the shares together um, on a single machine to do this so they have to use some some um, advanced uh, secure distributed uh, cryptography to do this. So that's what de decentralized signatures are at a super high level. Now, there's a couple of different ways you might implement um, decentralized signatures, and these are usually built on top of traditional centralized uh, signature schemes. One such scheme is called the BLS signature scheme. And this is actually the scheme that was used in the original internet computer design. And the reason that it was used in the original internet computer design was that this particular scheme allows for very efficient decentralized signing. Um, and moreover, because of the fact that the internet computer was a brand new thing and didn't have to rely on legacy technology, um, we were free to adopt the technology that gave us the most uh, uh, technically viable solution. So we could use BLS signatures and we didn't have to worry about being backward compatible with other standards and other signature schemes. So that was very compelling and, 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 and made a lot of sense at the time. However, in what we're working on now, the new thing that we're working on is to implement some new implementations of actually legacy uh, signature schemes. So we want to implement decentralized signing protocols for legacy signature schemes. And in particular, the, the most important one among them, and the one we're working on right now, is the ECDSA uh, signature scheme. So the reason the ECDSA signature scheme is important is that it's, um, it's, a, it's a scheme that's very widely used and standardized. And what we're doing right now is we're implementing a new, efficient, uh, decentralized ECDSA signing protocol. So this is new technology that we're developing um, and it's quite exciting. And one of the reasons it's particularly exciting is that ECDSA signatures are is the scheme that's used for signing transactions in Bitcoin and Ethereum and many other blockchains. Um, so by having the decentralized signing functionality for ECDS signatures on the internet computer, this gives us the ability to have canisters on the internet computer can sign transactions on the Bitcoin, Ethereum uh, blockchains, as well as many other blockchains. Um, this is a big deal because now the internet computer will be able to talk to uh, many other blockchains uh, without the need for what's uh, called a bridge. Now, a bridge is something that's used currently um, in the blockchain space to allow different blockchains to talk to one another, but there are some security vulnerabilities in using a bridge um, that makes them rather undesirable. By having a truly decentralized signing functionality implement, uh, implemented on the internet computer, we avoid all of the problems that bridges create from a security point of view. So what this gives us is a truly decentralized multi-chain solution that doesn't require um, a bridge. Finally, let me just say a few words about some of the nice features of the protocol that we're implementing. Um, 
our new protocol for decentralized signing is both robust and it's, it provides a high level of security, um, all in a very malicious, uh, very challenging environment. So even uh, in, in the most um, um, difficult of environments, our protocol will retain these robustness and security features. By robustness, I simply mean that even if there are some faults, even malicious faults in the system, um, uh, a signature will be produced upon request. Nothing can stop it. And also security means that um, not only will the signing key not leak, but uh, but no non-authorized signing requests will will give rise to a signature. Um, and all of this happens in a in a in a, in a very um, difficult environment where um, the network itself is assumed to be only asynchronous, which means that uh, there can be arbitrary delays in the delivery of messages. We don't rely on on fast message delivery in any way. Um, and it even works if some of the nodes in the network are so-called Byzantine, which means they've been corrupted by an adversary in some arbitrary way, possibly even with coordination among the, the corrupt uh, nodes in the network. So even in this very challenging environment, uh, our protocol provides both robustness and security. Um, and, and, that's a, and, and still is fairly efficient as well. Uh, which makes it stand out from a lot of the other work in this area. So achieving this level of robustness and security really is just matches the same level of robustness and security that's achieved in the, the rest of the internet computer. So we're really just making sure that um, uh, we can achieve the same levels of robustness and security for ECDSA um, decentralized signing as we already do in the rest of the internet computer. So that's the end of my talk. Uh, I hope I was able to give you uh, a brief introduction to chain key cryptography in general, and also to show you some of the exciting things that we're working on now in extending uh, chain key cryptography to enable new decentralized signing schemes.